Hello, my front porch friend. Oh my goodness, this day just could not get any prettier, I don't believe. And Palmer and I are out here just drinking in every drop of this springtime sunshine and loving it. And he smells like the creek he just came out of. And he's quite happy about it. <laughs> oh, I want to share a word with you right now that I received, interestingly enough, in the middle of the night. I had an interesting night last night. For me, it was just one of those nights that I had trouble sleeping. In fact, I woke up in the middle of the night with my mind. It just felt like my thoughts were like a, almost like a ping pong match. Have you ever had that happen? Even battling with, with some kind of fear and I was like, what in the world is going on? And finally, about, I guess, 3.30ish after tossing and turning and tossing and turning, I turned over and grabbed my old faithful devotional book, Streams in the Desert. It's such a classic book. And I just opened it at random to see what it would say. Sure enough, he began to speak. And I knew when I read it, it was a word not only to me, but also to you. I opened it and saw this verse out of Song of Solomon. And it says this. Who is this coming up from the desert, leaning on her lover? Then the writer just begins to tell this story, this encounter that he had one time at a prayer meeting where this uh, man began to pray. And when the man was praying, he just began, to, after he had worshiped and praised for a while, he said in the prayer meeting, the, the man began to say, Oh Lord, support us. Yes, God, support us on every leaning side. Whenever I heard those words on every leaning side, I just began to sense the Lord's voice. And then there was a poem also in this passage that I just heard the Lord speak to me in, and I believe I want you to listen to this as though the Lord is speaking to you. It says, child of my love, lean hard and let me feel the pressure of your care. I know your burden, child. I shaped it and balanced it in mine own hand made no proportion of its weight to your unaided strength. For even as I laid it on, I said, I will be near. And while she leans on me, this burden will be mine, not hers. So will I keep my child within the circling arms of my own love. Here, lay it down, not fear to impose it on a shoulder that upholds the government of the worlds. Yet closer come, you are not near enough. I would embrace your care, so I might feel my child reclining on my breast. You love me, I know, so then do not doubt, but loving me, lean hard. Lean hard. Oh, those two words spoke to me. And it asked this question of us. What are you leaning on today? What or who? When your strength feels weak, what are you leaning on? When your body feels weak, what are you leaning on? When your mind feels exhausted and trapped, in turmoil, in anxiety, or fear, what or who are you leaning on? If you're like me, you can know that whenever I have leaned on people in the past, they failed me. Whenever we lean on the systems of this world, by all means, especially right now, the systems, the economies of this world are shaking and cannot be leaned on. So where do we go? Where is there something strong enough to lean on? Where? I think the answer for us is found in Proverbs, the third chapter, fifth and sixth verses. Now, sweetheart, if you're not careful, 
this passage will become so familiar to us that we will lose the real message that's found in these familiar words. Listen to it with fresh ears. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Oh, there's just so much in that word for us right now. In it, he tells us clearly what not to lean on is our own understanding or perception of the things that we see in the natural, hear in the natural. Don't lean on those things. Don't lean on your understanding that's so limited. But what do I do then? You trust in the Lord. It's interesting that those both of those words are in the same verse, trust and lean. Why? Because you have to have trust to be able to lean. You have to be able to trust that whatever you're leaning on is going to hold you up. But too many times, we are either leaning on the wrong thing or leaning the wrong way. In other words, I, <laughs> I, I found as I thought about this, really there's different levels of leaning, isn't there? And I saw this image. And I'm going to, I've got a little prop I'm going to get right here inside my door. Hey, sweetheart, you know what? I'm going to get a recruit to help me. Sweetie, come here. I'm going to have my husband come out here and just help me hold the camera because I'm going to show you a little demonstration here. He's been there on his computer on the couch. Oh, you can meet my husband. This is my handsome husband, Rick Tao. Yes. Hello, friends. <laughs> yes. So I've asked, I'm going to ask you to help me. You hold the camera. I'm going to show okay. them something, All okay? Right. Now just hold it really still right there and I'll work within you. <laughs> Okay, thanks, sweetie. Okay, you stay with me, all right? Stay right here, focus. So, I was thinking about this. So, there's different levels of leaning. So, I just saw in my spirit a crutch, because that's what we lean on sometimes when we are weak. If we have a weak side, what do we do? Turn it just a little bit this way. There you go. We lean on a crutch, don't we? There we go. Say if my side is weak, if I've got a weak leg, watch, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna put the weak part, I'm gonna put it on the crutch, and I'm leaning on a crutch. Now the deal is with a crutch though, you still got control. So I've got the crutch that I'm leaning on, but I can still determine where I go. I can go over here if I want to go over here. I can go over here if I want to go over here. I'm still in control, even though I'm leaning. So I've got sort of a partial lean. This is kind of the way a lot of times we do God. We use him like a crutch. We sort of lean on him on Sunday morning when we need him. We sort of lean on him whenever we feel a little bit weak in something. But we're, we've still got enough control that if we don't feel, you know, like we're going the direction we want to go, we can take God and we can make sure he's going the way we want to go. That's not what God is asking of us. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay. This is not what God is asking of us. God does not want to be our crutch that we use on occasion whenever we're feeling a little weak, but we still maintain control. That's why he says in that passage, you trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You don't lean and stay in control by maintaining your own understanding, which is limited. You trust the Lord with all of your heart. What does that look like? It sort of looks like what I do on that swing right there. When I, when I go sit down on this swing, it's different than the crutch. I can't control this swing. I've got to fully trust that this swing is going to hold my weight and is going to carry me fully. That's the way we have to do God. We have to look at this swing. If I'm going to sit on this swing, this is the way it looks what God is calling us to do. I've got to trust that this swing is going to be able to hold me up from the top. I've got to trust that that rope is going to be able to hold the strength of my weight. I've got to trust that this swing is going to be able to carry me. This is what God wants us to do. This is what trusting with all looks like. I'm going to release all of me because to give complete trust to something means I've got to give complete release to something. So that means I've got to give all of my strength into this swing and I've got to give all of my trust that this swing is going to be able to carry me. 
This is what it looks like to trust in God with all of our heart. I got to get my feet up. Because see, if I keep my feet on the floor, I can still control the swing. But I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give all of myself. I've got my feet up. I've got my weight on this swing. 100% trust that this swing is going to carry my weight. This is what God is asking us to do today. Fully given over to God. All of my strength. All of my trust. I am leaning in to the strength of this swing. And you know what? I'm not laying here. I'm not sitting here striving and worried. Oh, I hope this swing is going to hold me. Oh, no. I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm going to sit here in this swing and let, let it do the work. And I'm going to rest in the strength of the swing. That's what God is asking us to do. We just rest in his strength. We rest in knowing he can be fully trusted. And you said, well, Karen, that sounds really good, you know, in, in, in the spiritual aspect of it. I know you're giving me a spiritual principle of what trust looks like. But how do I apply that to my daily circumstance, the current situation that I'm dealing with? Because maybe you're saying today, Karen, you're saying, Lee, not to my own understanding. I don't know what to do. Maybe you're facing today something that you just absolutely, you don't know what to do. I, I look at the news today and the things happening in the world right now. And you watch these things and you just think to yourself, God, I don't know what to do about all of this. Oh, how the word tells us what to do when we don't know what to do. And it's found in Romans, the eighth chapter. Stay with me, sweetheart. Romans, the eighth chapter tells us right here. He says, when you don't know what to do, maybe you've reached the point you say, I don't even know how to pray anymore. I've prayed till I don't even know what to pray anymore. That's all right. There's still more you can do. Romans 8, 28. I'm going to look it up right now. It says, when you, in the King James, it says, when you don't know how to pray as you ought, the Spirit himself will make intercession through you with groanings that cannot be uttered. This is how you trust in God. You pray. You pray. That's why he says, you acknowledge him and he will direct your path. This is what it is. You say, how do I trust in God? How do I apply this practically? It's trusting in God through prayer. And when you prayed all you know to do and you don't even know how to pray anymore, then you pray in the spirit. That's what he says. When you don't know how to pray as you ought, you pray in the Spirit. That's what it says in the New Living Translation. It says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When you feel weak, like we were saying a while ago, weak, you feel like you're limping. When you, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is is saying for the spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will that is so powerful that is saying when you don't know how to pray I don't know what to do my understanding is so limited I've prayed all I know to pray and I still don't even know how to pray Paul said it like this in first Corinthians the 14th chapter Paul says I've learned I pray with my understanding and I pray with my spirit in other words, my spirit has been filled with the Holy Spirit. So when I don't know how to pray in my mind as I ought, this situation is too big for me. This situation is so overwhelming, I don't even have answers. And maybe you're at the place of saying, I can't, I've prayed everything I even know to pray. Well, don't stop praying. You can't, you can't just pray and then get to the place where oh, I'm just all discouraged. I've just prayed and I've prayed everything I know to pray now. Just pray it's just going to have to be God now. Well, honey, whenever you've prayed all you know to pray, then you pray in the Spirit. And when you pray in the Spirit, I love this. That's what he's saying in Romans. The Spirit is praying the perfect will of God. That's what he's saying. How do you pray in the Spirit? There's different ways. The Spirit of God is in you. When you've run out of understanding, then you just look up and you say, Holy Spirit, pray through me. I've been at times in prayer when the Bible says, with groanings that cannot be uttered. Sometimes pain is too deep for any words. But the, whole, the our Heavenly Father understands the groan of our spirit. I've been in such places before, and I know you have too, when 
pain has hurt so deep with a betrayal maybe in your marriage, or maybe it's a betrayal with a child, and those, that pain is beyond anything of our understanding. We don't have words for that kind of pain. And you can lay there before God and you can just let the groan of the Spirit come out of your mouth. And that in itself is a language God hears. There's also the language of the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul's talking about in 1 Corinthians 14. We pray in English, we pray in the Spirit, in a heavenly language that the Holy Spirit will give us. You say, Miss Karen, I've never done that before. Just ask the Father for it. Say, Holy Spirit, you're in me. I want you in me. Come in me, Holy Spirit. And then out of your belly, Jesus said, will flow a river of living water. You let him pray through you. Let him, let him have your voice, your mouth, your tongue, and just begin to speak the language. Just say, Lord, this is beyond my understanding, so I'm going to let the Holy Spirit pray through me. Then you just begin to pray in the language of the Holy Spirit. And the beautiful thing is, Paul says, my understanding, I don't understand what I'm saying, but the Father does. And then also in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, it says that the Holy Spirit, when he prays through us, he knows the mind of the Father. That means the spirit that's in you knows what God wants. So what happens is you don't know it in the natural mind, but the spirit in you does. So he's using your mouth to pray to the Father, the will of God. And what happens then, you are in agreement with the Father. So from the earth to heaven, I am praying his will. What, what does that result in? The manifestation of his will. Because you know what 1 James 5 and 14 says, when we pray according to his will, we can have whatever we ask. That's how you pray according to his will when you don't know his will, is you just start praying in the spirit. And then you're praying the will of God. And when you pray the will of God, you can have what you ask. So I love that. I love that you can do that right now. You can do that today. Don't, don't be limited by your own understanding. Don't lean on your own understanding. Our understanding is so limited, we're like a little box of understanding. We just go by what we see in the natural, what we hear. That's our understanding. We can't live our lives there. It's too limited. And the problems of our lives are too big. We don't have answers for some of our situations. When you're dealing with marriage problems, sometimes you don't have the answer for it. Sometimes when your children are off and the enemies attack your children and they're doing crazy stuff and saying crazy things, we don't know what to do. So what do we do? That's what he's saying. Don't lean on your understanding and fail and worry and stress. Lean. Trust. That's what leaning is. Trusting with all of my heart. I'm going to let go of my own strength and I'm just going to look up to God and I'm going to begin to pray. So that's what you do. You say, Holy Spirit, pray through me. Start looking at your Father praying His will. Sometimes I like to look at the situation itself in the spirit realm and just look at it in the spirit. If you're praying for your daughter, even if she's not in the room, that doesn't matter. Just look at her in the spirit realm and start praying in the spirit. Look at your son in the spirit realm and then you just start praying in the Holy Spirit. Because that's praying the will of God. And I love this too. One more thing is, is when he says, lean not to your own understanding. You can just look up and say, God, I don't know what to do. But you do. And I love this. Because honey, look at me and listen good. God knows what to do about your situation. He knows. God is not sitting in heaven going, oh boy, she's got me on this one. I don't know what to do about that mess. No, he knows. And so because he knows, he just needs somebody like you to get through from heaven to earth. So I just say it like this, God, you know what to do. Do it. You know what to do to bring her to her knees. Do it. You know what to do about this financial situation. Do it, God. You know what to do about my body. Do it, God. Show me what to do. You do it, God. And when you pray like that, you are releasing his will. Same thing as saying, God, let your will be done. Oh, I love that, sweetheart. 
Oh, I just love that. Let me just pray over you right now. Father, I pray for my friend on this front porch of intercession that I'm standing on. God, I pray that today you will help her to lay aside the crutch. Come on. I'm just going to get this crutch and I'm going to declare play right now. Come on. The crutch has got to go. Here we go. That crutch has got to go right now. That crutch is going. We're not going to use you like a crutch. God, we're going to depend upon you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, all of our strength. We're going to love you. We're going to trust you because you can be trusted. Father, we're going to release our own understanding to trust you, God, that you know what to do. Do it, God. Do it in my friend's prodigal daughter. Do it in my friend's prodigal son today. Do it in her marriage or his marriage. Do it, Father, for healing in their body. We release your spirit, God, in the earth, even today for the Ukraine and the nations that are in trouble. Lord, let your will be done, oh God. And do it, Lord, according to your will. Let it be so, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Now, you and I agree together for that. Amen. Honey, comment, comment, comment. Let me know. Let me know what God is speaking to your heart. Let me know what you are needing in prayer. And let's just stand together on the word of God. I want to close our time today. Sitting again on this porch, on this, this swing. Representing the way we are trusting in God. I'm going to get my feet up again because I don't want to control it. I just want to rest in it. And sitting on this swing, I just say, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning. I'm safe and secure from all alarm. I'm leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Can I just say this? What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my lord so near leaning on the everlasting arms sing it with me leaning leaning safe and secure from all alarm leaning on jesus leaning on jesus leaning on the everlasting arms I love you, my friend. Go outside and just find you a place to sing that song all day long today and live in his peace. I love you, my friend, and I'll see you next week. All right.